Good afternoon. It is March 16th, Monday, and I am talking to you from my apartment in Carmel. Uh, this has been a tough day for me, like for a lot of us. Here's what the FedEx man delivered to me just a little while ago. These are my 20, 2020 Cincinnati Red season tickets. There's, there's my opening day ticket and tickets for the whole season. And I'm sad today because I realized that there's probably a good chance that I'm not going to get to go to many of those games. And hence, I'm wearing the hat. Um, and I imagine for many of you, there are lots of things that you're feeling sad about, um, things that you're going to miss. Uh, and I'm sure there's uncertainty, as there is for all of us. And it's part of why I wanted to share with you today, and um, I'm convinced that one of the things that's really important during this time is that we uh, take care of ourselves, and that we find ways to stay together as a church community. Um, and so I want to introduce today something that I'm calling the Daily Office, in which for the next four weeks, um, we're going to every day uh, have a, a video posted in which we walk through the Gospel of John from chapter 13 up to Easter. We'll take Sundays off, uh, but otherwise uh, we'll do this. And we're going to engage in a practice together called Lexio Divina. Uh, I think this is an important practice uh, for engaging with scripture in part because it uh, invites all of us to enter into the presence of God, to be aware of God's presence. Uh, we know that God is with us all the time. Whether we believe that or whether we are aware of that, God's loving presence is always with us. And this is a practice, uh, which I'm going to explain in a minute, that helps us become aware of something that is always true. And it also gets us in touch with scripture. Uh, Lexio Divina is Latin for divine reading. Lexio is the word for read. Divina obviously is for divine. And it's a traditional Christian practice of engaging scripture in order to draw closer to God. And this practice treats scripture primarily as a living word uh, rather than scripture as an object to be studied, dissected, and scrutinized. It's not bad to study scripture in an academic way, to take note of all the grammatical issues, historical issues, um, contextual factors. I think that's all important, and yet if we only read scripture that way, um, we can become distanced from its real significance. So in this practice, we're thinking of scripture as a living word, a context through which God wants to speak to us. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says that indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's what we want to tap into in our time together. Uh, this practice has roots in the thought of Origen of Alexandria, who is a third century great theologian. It's eventually established as a monastic practice in the 6th century, and later it gets formalized into a four-step process in the 12th century. And it's that four-step process that we're going to work with. Now, let me just mention the steps briefly before we practice it today. First step is lexio, uh, Latin for read. And in that step, we simply read the text slowly, um, and we take account of what's in Scripture, what are the facts as 
we notice them. We pay attention to particular words and phrases that jump out to us. So in a minute, I'm going to read today's text and ask you to listen to it and think about what words jump out to you, what ideas. You might even imagine that you are there in the midst of that story that's unfolding. What do you hear God or Jesus saying to you? Second step is called meditatio or meditation. Um, I'll give you an R word to go with reading and that is to reflect. So in this stage, in this step, we reflect on what we've read. Um, we open ourselves up to be addressed more personally by God. We let Jesus speak to us. We absorb the word or phrase that we've read. And we ask a question of God, what do you want to say to me? What do I need to hear on this day at this moment? The third step is oratio or prayer, to pray. And here is where we respond. So we've read, we've reflected, and now we respond to God in prayer. After we've listened to the passage again, we open our heart up to respond to God in prayer. We may have a growing sense of God speaking to us and bidding us to pray. I'm sure during these times, there's a lot that we all want to pray about. What particular element has drawn itself to your attention as you hear the passage read? And how do you want to pray today? And you're invited to do that. The fourth step is contemplatio, uh, or contemplation. And the R word here is remain. So we've read, we've reflected, we've responded, and now we remain in this stage. And we contemplate all that's happened By the time we've heard the scripture for the fourth time now, we'll be familiar with it, its rhythms, its cadences. We'll have a sense of what's included in the text, what's going on. And here we're invited to simply be with God in that setting. There's no right or wrong way to do this. People have different ideas. And it's a time to be quiet, to still our hearts, and to be aware of God's presence. And it seems to me in moments like we're facing right now, that is very important to our health. There's lots of things we can do during this time. We have more time on our hands, probably many of us, than usual. This is a way to draw close to God and become aware that he is close with us. So our first passage for today is from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 11. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. If you have a Bible handy and you want to read along, that would be great, but it's not necessary. You can just listen to the text. I'm going to read the text through. And then I'm going to invite you to be silent for a moment. And then we'll proceed to the next step. So this is reading. Reading and hearing the text together. John 13, 1 through 11. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, 
and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you now to take a moment And think about what you've read or heard. words or phrases have jumped out to you? Where has your mind landed? Let's listen to the text again. And we're going to meditate or reflect on it. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. In silence, for a moment, meditate or reflect on this text. Rests in your mind, in the word or phrase you've chosen or that stood out to you. 
absorb it. Think about its intersection with your own life, with what's going on right now, perhaps in deep places that you don't often talk about. Ask God, what do you want to say to me right now in this moment? Let's be silent. In our third step, we're going to listen to the text again, or read it together if you're following along. And we're going to let our hearts be open to respond to God in prayer. As you engage in this practice more frequently, you often will find a sense of God speaking to you. How do you want to respond to these words? How do you want to respond to the living Christ speaking to you even now? Let me read the passage again. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God. He got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. In a moment of silence, let's offer prayers to God in response to what we've heard.
read the text one last time. Here you're familiar with it by now. You're simply going to receive the words in your heart as fertile soil. You're going to look forward to the ways that God is going to be near to you. And you're going to appreciate your awareness of God's presence. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. Let's keep silence as we remain in this text and in God's presence. my phone didn't interrupt you too much. So our plan is that we're going to do this every day. I'm going to, I or someone else, we'll see how many others participate, but we're going to post every day a video in which we work through uh, these texts from John 13 through the end of 19, leading us right up to Easter every day except Sunday. Uh, obviously, you could do this yourself. You really don't need me uh, to guide you, but um, we thought it would be nice to have a way that we can be together and for you, if you'd like, to be led. Um, and I'd just like to encourage you to um, engage in this practice. At the end, I am confident that you will feel closer to God, that you will be aware of God's presence in a new way, you will have a much greater sense of the contents of this portion of Scripture because you will have heard it read and uh, reflected on it, prayed over it, and contemplated it. 
uh, several times each day for each text. And it will be exciting to see how God will work in all of our lives as we share this practice together. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us. No matter the circumstances. We pray especially during these times, these difficult, challenging, unprecedented times, that we would have a greater sense of your presence, that we would be aware of your work in our lives, that we would know the joy of your spirit. Be with us now, we pray individually, and even though we're apart, together, as we strive to be faithful during these difficult times, we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you all for sharing this time with me. Uh, I wish you peace.